Since we're streaming. Yep. Alright. Loud. Yep, sounds good to me. We've still got that, that little bit of tinniness from that, but I don't know that we can afford to turn it off. Die of each drug. People are going Not to have understand that. I did see a really funny image on Twitter earlier that was uh, the rest of the world. It was, you know, moderate temperatures, people just nodding and having a good time. Hey, everybody, it was, hey, well, hey, hey, glad you're here. Hello. And then it was taxis, and it was just like a helicopter being pushed down by the heat waves yeah. and crashing. So, yeah, that's that's us right now. It's, it's the humidity. Yes, yes, it is. All, right. All the notifications have been sent out. <laughs> Did you really? Nice. I played a little bit of that earlier today. It's funny because in the demo they give you like a, uh, the first two hours of the game. Yeah. And they give you like a look ahead. Right. And they tell you that the events in this this section that's ahead may be different the events in the main game. And then they mention that it's like much further in the game. It's actually just like the next mission after the intro. Okay. It's like, oh, okay. It is very different still, so it's not a spoiler, but... Right. I just thought it was really funny that it was... You say so, Trey. So I do have a pre-show topic for you. Okay. So, whoa, is that... No, your computer's just really fast. I got really confused. Your computer said it was 7.05, and I was like, what? Yeah. That's how Uh, fast my computer is. It's a hidden hidden time. Nice. Watch the black and brown. So the uh, the pre-show topic that I have for you is another cringe story from RPG Horror Stories. Okay. Uh, but it leads into the topic. The story is of a DM that is a bit of a pushover and lets their players get away with Hurry just about up, anything. Look, I'm not telling the story. Don't start with me. Specifically, uh, one player that takes over the game pretty much starts trying to rewrite backstories for other players. Uh. And because this person is the loud one, which, you know, I'm the loud one. I get it. Uh, the DM, who is a pushover, just allows them to get away with it. Yeah. Not how that should work, right? No. Uh, but they specifically do a, like, what's the right phrase here? They do a, like, hey, I'm going to make a magic item. Yeah. And the DM's like, okay, sure. And the stats that they give could drop it to Rask. Right. And the DM's like, well, no. And the other player's like, don't do this. Don't let them at this. Yeah. And then, like, the loud guy is just consistent about it. Right. And so eventually the DM gives in and gives him this magic idol. And what that leads into topic wise is sometimes as a DM, you have to be willing to say no. Right. Even if it's something people really want to do. And if sometimes, every time you sit down for it, if any discussion on anything else comes back to, hey, can I have one of those in the quest? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. You have to be willing to say no. And sometimes it's the stuff you think would be really cool if they were allowed to do it. But there's just no physical way for them to do it. Right. (laughs) Look, man. Can my character then be this if I do this? Yes. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. That... It... (sighs) It leads into a thing where you don't want to have to tell people they can't do the fun thing. Right, but I mean, one of the things comes down to is like, okay, look, everybody's here at the table playing, but I am the main character. So therefore, everything's got to line up, you know. I should be the best at it. I should be the strongest. You know, the, any story arc should revolve around me. Right, and that's what it leads to, right? Without without fail. Somebody always feels like they Come have on, the main Dre. character. Like, no, I know I'm the loud guy. I to clarify, I'm not that guy that constantly tries to to get. I do try to get stuff from my DM a lot, but I don't ever like push for it. If he says no, then okay, that's fine. You know, I don't keep bringing it back up again yeah, later. I just won't, like one time. If, if you ask for anything like reasonable once, probably maybe. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Almost always the question is, so can I get a Gundam or? So can I get a rail gun? <laughs> so I've got a sword. 
Did I make a chainsaw around the sword? I did ask that at one point. Yeah. The answer was no. Yeah. I also tried to electrify the blade without shocking myself. Yeah. That one wasn't bad. That one probably could have been worse. I think a little bit more tweaking. I think we could have made that one work. Yeah. But stun sword. But stun sword. The kicker is if you're that player that wants the cool thing, understand when your DM says no, they're saying no for a reason. They're not just trying to take your fun away. Yeah. They're actually just trying to keep the game on track. It, look, the rule of cool does not override everything. Right. And for all the times you told me no, there have been some times. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I am the guy that trades my non-existent children for Armor Core 6. There have been some times where you just, can I jump off this ship and try to dragoon into this dragon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all are both the dragon. And it was cool. So, yeah. your DM won't always say no. Uh, You'll just me. say no to the things that don't work. It was. It was really great. Yeah. It was... I still think back on it fondly. I and bet you do. Especially if the dwarf cleric jumped out after me and landed in the snow. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, adventures. Adventures, adventures. But yeah, don't don't pester your DMs. If you want something cool and they say no, the answer was no. If you really want that cool thing, go indeed. If you really want that cool thing, make your own game. Yeah. Where that cool thing can be there, and then you'll understand why the DM told you no, probably. But, or, or start... Uh, you know, let's bring that up in session zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay to go outlandish. It's, well, we're, we're all going to go outlandish then. You know, it's that. It's, we're still going to have some balance. I want to be a space marine. I bet you do. I want to have a chainsword and a gun that shoots bullets the size of a kobold's head. Yeah, no, that's it's not going to work at the table, though. I know that, so I don't yeah. ask. If I wanted to be a space marine that bad, I'd just run a game of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. There you go. So anyway, that's another minute from the, the RPG Horror Stories yeah. subreddit for you. Yeah. Wait and see next time what crazy things will get brought your way. I don't know. That, it's never worked for a... I don't know. It's never worked to like bring more to the story. No. Like the best story times is like you when you were dealing from like, no, I don't have all this special stuff. We're going to try this anyway. Yeah. You know? I agree. Look, I don't have any information. I'm just going to kick down doors till I find the person right. I'm looking for. I right. do just want yeah. big light. That is tempting. That is very tempting. I gotta admit. Look, right now, the Pathfinder character that I'm playing can explode for fire damage, but when I hit level 4, I can turn that into lightning damage. Mm. I think I actually might be able to do that level 2. Maybe. Mm. I guess I'll figure out with that. Lightning. See how it runs for you, man. Hope you don't, hope you don't blow yourself up. Yeah. That's very possible. I really don't say that wholeheartedly or anything. Right. right. So, I mean, it's, could, we kind of like it by yourself. Yeah, it would that, be really not, funny. That's not a good thing for me to say at the end. No, but it would be really funny. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> also, Chan, I'm sorry for any extra coughing that I have tonight. Uh, I am getting better. But I'm still trying to get better, so. <clears throat> Sicko. You ready to kick this thing off? I guess so. I guess about ready. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Full Spectrum TTRPG Podcast. My name is Trey. I'm Ron Ren. And we've got some TTRPG news to talk about. By which I mean we don't have any news, actually, because nothing's yeah. happened. So. All right. Instead, we'll just get right into our stuff. Big Lightning Gundam and PC6. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, I wanted to have news to bring you today. I really did. Uh, it's been a trend that I've had news for the last few. Yeah. And I was all excited for it. And then there were no news. There's no stuff. So. Which the coast is still riding. Yep. That, that hasn't changed. TSR still bankrupt. Yep. Still bankrupt. <laughs> okay. I pretty much covered it. So, you know. On to next week's show. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk <laughs> Arthurian mythology. All right. All right. So I got. That's a little loud. Today. 
Yes, Camelot. Camelot. That is the the uh, the castle, right? With that. But so I saw. I thought I started at the top. Some big names you should know. For Arthurian, you've got to start with King Arthur. King Arthur. It's Arthurian mythology is named after him. At that, he was the king of the Britons, and he carried Excalibur, and he established the Round Table. And he rode around on a non-existent horse while his page slapped coconuts together behind him. Yeah. Not quite, but close. His father's name, Uther Pendragon. Pendragon. Arthur Pendragon. Uh, and in Merlin, you should know Merlin. Merlin. Wise, powerful soldier. He's in the chat for you. He's an advisor, the mentor. He's the one that, in some cases, kind of raises Arthur and some retellings, and some he just comes and finds him. Yeah. Merlin, for some reason, was trying to be in all caps. Maybe he deserves it. I don't know. My man! Yeah, the, uh... Not Merlin. Yes. Merlin. Merlin. And that's... We spell it M -E -M -E -R -L -I -N. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's spelled L-Y-N. Yeah. You see a difference, a few different spellings for this one. Right? Now, we're going to talk, we're talk about Guinevere. got to know who Guinevere is. Yeah. A lady with the queen, and uh, she's just basically a cause of a lot of trouble. That is true, though. I yeah. wish I wish there was more to her. Yeah, but and one of the troubles is it's also because of Sir Lancelot. Now you got Sir Lancelot was known like he's like one of the best knights of the Round Table, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody. He's raised by the Lady of the Lake, the one who gives back Excalibur. And there's a, uh, 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 fight when, and some retellings are a fight between Lancelot and, uh, I'm <laughs> Lancelot and Arthur. And, uh, Lancelot basically beats him and Arthur uses the power of Excalibur to take a, a, a final swing at him and Excalibur breaks. And, uh, he's basically killed Lancelot. But he's all remorseful. He's like, no, no, I did that out of anger rather yeah. than honor. Yeah. Everything, and then uh, Lady of the Lake heals Lancelot and fixes the blade. Thanks, Lady of the Lake. Yeah, but then... Tony you know, Clutch. He's a, You know, then Arthur becomes the only person ever to beat Mongo, and Lancelot follows him around. The, uh... Okay, he's, he's not in there? Oh. Lancelot the Lake. Okay. Uh, Sir Gawain. Is that who the the pilot from Igloo was based on? Jean de Luc? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. With the, the Zuda and its knightly appearance with the helmet? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I think in some tellings he's French. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Sir Gawain. Um, no courageous knight. Uh, he uh, was known as the most chivalrous knight. And if you hear a story about him coming across a, a knight of the round, coming across some kind of mythical being, probably him. Whether it's a green dragon, I mean, a green knight, or a dragon. He's in there, you just don't have him. Oh, okay. Makes okay. sense. Right there. Um, the Latin, or not the Latin, the French version of the name is Sir Gavin, right? Yeah, well, that's Which is infinitely less cool than yeah, Gawain. Yeah, Gawain. Infinitely less cool. Uh, did you just remember... Sir Gawain, he's the most chivalrous, right? Uh, Morgan Le Fay. Okay. Now this is this gets a little bit weird because it's Arthur's half sister, and she's a sorcerer. A little sorcerer. afraid to look this one up. And I, yeah, I bet the uh, he, here it says she had a complex relationship with him. I think it's a number of things. She was a his half sister. She was a sorcerer. She used magic to seduce Arthur one night, get pregnant, and uh give uh, birth to a son named Mordred. Bumpy. <laughs> right. Uh, and Mordred ends up becoming like his dad's ultimate betrayer. Yeah. What uh, is the name of the sword he uses? I don't know. I don't know. I had it on here. Brianac? Possibly. I will look that up. I don't know why okay. I'm looking it up on my phone, but I'm already doing it now. Okay, so. do it now. Then. 
Uh, Lady to Light, it's a mystical figure who gave uh, it. Sorry. Ex Excalibur, Arthur, and Ray Lancelot. The Sir Galahad. Galahad, Galahad is a purest knight. He's a, he gets the Holy Grail. Yeah. He eats purest knight. Isn't it Fay? The sword? Claret? Could be. Are you talking about Morgan Le Fay? I've seen it spelled both ways. Yeah. It can be either way. I think F A E is Shakespearean. That would make a lot of sense. I could be wrong. Do not take that as fact. Galahad the Pure. Yeah, we're talking about Galahad the Pure. Uh, Percival. Yeah, good old um, Percival. Now he 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 did search for the Holy Grail, but he got kind of lost, and uh, he, he had a bit, uh, different adventures along the way. Um. Here's one that doesn't get named much, okay? Okay. Sir Bedivere. Yeah. Okay, Sir Bedivere, he he was uh, the most loyal knight. And he's the one that ends up taking Excalibur back to the Lady of the Lake. After spoilers, Arthur's killed. Yeah. Uh, he's also the knight that's in uh, Monty Python. Yeah. He's the one that has the little deal that he closes and he's right. the smart one yeah it's good teeth this big the uh, uh sir tristan yeah i like tristan uh tristan and Solda is a uh shakespearean story I like it better romeo and juliet yeah it's a it's a tragic love story you have him nice really that's cool the uh the failed book that i started writing had a character based on tristan oh well uh, just like him you failed yeah i did <laughs> He was a, a knight out of his time that was trapped in a suit of armor, but the armor had a sick cannon built into it, and it had a Draymond on the other side that could drop grenades into it. And instead of legs, he had boosters. I should finish that book, even though it's going to be terrible. Okay. You have okay. better here? Nice. No, okay, got gotcha. you. Cool. Uh, king Pelinor. Okay. Uh, he was a, a rival king to Arthur. But he spent his life searching for the questing beast. Did he? Uh, did he own any fields? <laughs> no, different. Spelt differently, but not but not by much. That very good, very good call back there. I'm proud of that one. Way to go! Thank you. Way to go, try. Right there. Every once in a while. Yes. Uh, Sir K. Yeah. Uh, this is. And now every time I think I hear Sir Kay, I think I actually think of the the uh, the, the Disney sword and stuff. Yeah, I do too. Because that's got Sir Kay. That's his his foster brother. But uh, unlike in Sword of the Stone, he's actually a very skilled knight. Yeah, he's a strong knight, and he's like a good guy for the most part too. Yeah, for the most part, for as good as part. as good as most of the knights are. Right. Um. The Green Knight is worth mentioning because it's a story outside Sir Gawain. The Green Knight shows up to the Knights of Round and he's like, I will let any of you cut off my head here. It's a real short version of it. Uh, cut off my head here. Uh, but in a year's time, you got to come to me and let me cut yours off. Uh, if nobody's going to do it, I take over this hall. Sir Gawain stood up for Arthur and it's like, I'll do it. Locked off his head, at which point the Green Knight bent down, picked up his head, and left. And uh, here comes by, and this, this tale about him going and people trying out, but he's he intends to go uh, and honor his oath. <laughs> Very honorable, even up to the point of having his head lopped off by a supernatural Green Knight. Yeah. Uh, the Lady of Shalot. Um, she can only watch the world uh, through a mirror. Uh, to weave and observe the world through a mirror. Uh, there you go. The uh, that's a pretty famous painting now yeah. that you brought up there. You've probably seen the painting of her. Howard David Johnson. Yes. Interesting. I think that painting. I didn't know that was her. Oh no, this one's but this one is by uh, John William Waterhouse. I'm sorry, that's very cool. 
two of them. There. Um, now you gotta give a shout out to Sir Thomas Mallory. Yeah, because uh, he pop compiled and popular. Uh, he's the one that put all the Ethereum legends together first. It was in French, Le Mort de Art, it's the death of Arthur. Uh, so a lot of how we look and, and what's passed down, uh, and Arthur is actually from him. That's what I expected to come up. The yeah. books. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the Fisher King. The Fisher King, now, I'm not like the Indiana Jones story. The Fisher King is the one who guards the, uh, the Holy Grail. Yeah. Uh, mortally wounded, but never dies. This one doesn't get mentioned much. Nimue. Okay. Nimue is a sor another sorceress. Uh, she's up there. She's supposed to be up there with, like, Merlin. Like, there's this mysterious idea. Like, maybe they don't come from here. Or nobody really knows where they came from. Right. Right? Either. She's very smart. Very powerful. Uh, yeah, sorcerers. Yeah, sorcerers. And obviously, there's a lot more knights. Just before anybody in the comment section is like, well, you didn't name this person. Go ahead and make your comment, because you're right. Yeah. But also, there's a lot of knights. Well, it's... It, I found there there's like a like a, a handful, like a core few, and then it could be anywhere from like 40 to like 400. Yeah. You know, of who's there. And then there's tales of, you know, apparently there's a lot of writings and stories like, yeah, this was a knight that was, you know, he was at the round table, but he's not mentioned in the right. main story. And he, you know, but he was from around here, believe it or not. Yeah. So if you're going, hey, we didn't mention Sir Geharis or Sir, the E makes a different sound. In way, maybe? Uh, but if you're like, you didn't mention Sir Harris or Sir Bors or Sir uh, Benacor. I, I think I got Bors on here in a couple of Oh, do more. you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is a lot. I, I got me some notes on some, so of course, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, just kind of right. summarized that long ago. The Quest of the Holy Grail, that's kind of the, like, a central theme. That's most, mm -hmm. That is a story of, uh, that's supposed to save Camelot. Yeah. Holy Grail. Bye. Avalon. I'm trying to think of the word. I don't think I wrote that down in here, and I should have. It's right there. Oh, okay, there it is. That's probably where I saw it, and my brain went, hey, don't sound like you didn't see it. I don't know. Shh. Fooled myself. Uh, Sword and Stone. Uh, some phase you'll find it at the Anvil, but it's Excalibur. Uh, some tales has always been in there, it kind of sounds like. In other ones, it was actually author stat Uther, who's stab the store sword into the stone right. or the anvil. A uh, round table, obviously we know that's <laughs> everybody sat at the round table because everybody was equal. Yep. All the way around. So the sword, uh Excalibur. Yeah. Now that's if and if you didn't know any Arthurian legend, I think you'd still know that sword. Yeah. If you played like Final Fantasy. Yeah. Right? Okay, you probably still it's in a nice bunch of games too. too right? Yeah, it's in a bunch of games, Excalibur. Yeah, and in a bunch of anime. Well, like I remember, I thought it was so cool that the uh, Final Fantasy had the uh, Excalibur and the Masamune. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, there is a there was a seat at the round table. It was called the Siege Perilous. And it was a reserve seat. There was no night that sat in it because when well, you got to uh, <laughs> suck in Avalon forever, the uh, but if you had to when well, you came back with the Holy Quail, uh, the Holy Quail, <laughs> the Holy Grails. <laughs> We're making our own money by that. Yeah. They really wanted some eggs, man. Yeah, the Holy Grail. That's where they. That was like the seat you got. Yeah, it's like, hey, that guy gets to sit there. Because he found the Holy Grail. That's a pretty good quail noise, by the yeah. way. I just want to throw that out there. Yes. We're going to get to Avalon. Don't worry. We're not going to forget Avalon. Yes. Where, where did I go? Uh, next is the Questing Beast. Questing Beast. Beast. Yeah. yeah. A strange and mythical creature created by King Telenor, representing a mysterious quest. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a story of a story, Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Do that. The Lady of Avalon is a magical figure associated with the Isle of Avalon. 
an enchantment surrounding Arthur. Yeah. Right? Camelot's a cool place. It is. That's fun. That's where I, uh, Arthur's resting place is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's place, a place of magic, enchant, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's magic. Uh, my favorite thing about Avalon is that the gargoyles go there in gargoyles. Yeah. And while they're there, they meet a bunch of people. And those people are like King Arthur, who is at first sleeping, but, oh, what is his name? The bad guy. I've completely forgotten his name. The bad guy in gargoyles. That's the, he's got the, the shot of white in his hair. Yeah, even if I didn't, I wouldn't tell you. I want to see, I'll oh, something there, so. He's named after somebody from Shakespeare. Yeah. What is his name? King Lear. Othello. Oh, it's the most OP sheet. There. That's true. That's true for, for Excalibur. Oh, I want to look it up. It's bothering me too much. Oh, oh my I'm gosh. sorry. Gargoyles. Placing dragons. Okay. Bad guy. It's on the Holy Quail. Excellent. It's David Xanatos. That's right. Okay. Zan- David Xanatos wakes him up. And it's like, you have to come back and help us. You're you're the true king. And Arthur's like, no. It's, <laughs> no, you're a bad person. I can tell looking at you. Yeah. You are a bad... Yeah, played by Jonathan Frakes. And so he's like, come on, though. I woke you up for a reason. He's like, yeah, you woke me up too early. And it leads to a whole subplot there. And it's a great series of episodes. Yeah. The, uh, nice. Yeah, it's a great there's show. A title. There is a title for Arthur. Once a future king. Yeah. Because his death in Avalon, his final resting place, he will come again when Britain needs him. Another Rise from the Dead story. See, those are a bit. Yeah. These rebirth stories. They're pretty popular. Then. Yeah, right now we live in, we're living in between times. See, it yeah. used to be fantabulous. Right. And this, they, you know, some bad stuff happened that took away the fantabulous. Right. We're living, but that's going to happen again. If you come back and have it again, we're going to have the fantabulous. So it was quite a bit. Yeah. Story. Uh, My question is, because you see a lot in history of times where people are like, yeah, he's coming back now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what is it? How bad does it got to get? All right. You know? All right. The, uh, I think, I, I think it has shown up already. Yeah, I think so. It's cool. cool. But there was a time where that was like, a, you know, a thing I've been little in England. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, the Battle of Camlin is important one to know. Okay. That's the final battle battle between uh, Mordred, his uh, little uh, inbred son, yeah, and him are gonna fight. And they fight, and Mordred he kills Mordred. Mordred kills him. Yeah. And then you know, of course, his body gets ta- taken off to uh, uh, Avalon. Do you think, that's a quick sidestep, do okay. you think the Arthur story was first, about Arthur going to sleep and coming back? Do you think Cucullin's story of going to sleep and coming back, which is not what the legend became, but it was one of the, the earlier versions of the legend, and then also Ragnar Lothbrok of the, the Vikings, that story of him dying and coming back. Uh, which of the three do you think was first? Because I believe all three of them like, whichever one came first inspired the other two, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's hard to say, because they would have all been... Got, what, Irish, Britain, and uh, Nordic, yeah? Mm-hmm. And they all would have been around the same time the legends were written. Well, see, Nordic... So you're looking at, like, six to 700 uh, AD. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't have the time, times on that. As, I think the setting... For Arthur, at like the at the time they're talking about it happened, right, is probably earlier than the other right. two, but I don't know which one came first. Right, I guess there's also Ivor Lothbrook, son of Ragnar Lothbrook, which yeah. is in Britain, who is supposed to be the opposite. He was supposed to be a scourge that would return, because as that old saying goes, "The good die young, but a scourge lives a thousand years." Only the good die young. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> Just an interesting thought question there. Because I do love the story of, like, the idea of Arthur's going to come back when we need him most, you know? Yeah. And he'll come back, and the knights will come back, too, and, you know? That's yeah. all cool. I like that. Well, I've, you know, it's been used in story once or twice. Mm-hmm. So, uh, watch when not too, 
recently. I think we're talking about the Marlin series. Yeah. Marlin things. <coughs> so, Sword of Stone, that's the main, that, that's the story. That's yeah. Arthur's origin story, right? That's where we get started. Uh, going through that, where he was before that, got to change, something like stable boy. Marlin's had him hidden away and just brought him back. Yeah, and that's uh, when he runs into Battle Mim, and she turns herself into right, an elephant. Right. Uh, he was hidden in. He was hidden into the midst of Babylon uh, as a child, and brought out uh, when he was a little bit older to reclaim the sword. There's a few different ways, uh, but that <coughs> is a sword. Uh, but that's you know. As soon as that's done, everybody's like, "Yeah, okay, I guess he's it then." Yeah, he must be king. Because a lot of people, a lot of people try. Uh, but who made him king, though? Maybe. I mean, not to so, harp too much on the Monty Python sketch of the peasant that's questioning King Arthur. It's Lady in the Lake. Yeah. Yeah. But why is our democracy built around Britain itself? <laughs> a lady in a lake. Because <laughs> like it's impressive. <clears throat> no, if you like the story of King Arthur and you have yeah, not yet seen yet, you've not yet seen uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail, you should watch it. It's very good. Probably not. And there's a whole <laughs> yeah. There's actually like a whole thing of like around these tales, the tell the time of when they were supposedly happened to even when, up to you know when they started being uh, uh, put together. Yeah, for one whole tale. Of the idea, you know, that might makes right. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can, if I can kick your ass, then I'm correct. Yeah, pretty much. You know? And that's what kind of what it was about. He, you know, he pulled the sword from his stone. No strength, nobody else had. Um, he beat warriors that nobody else could beat. Mm -hmm. You know, it was he was he was the man. He was the guy. Yeah. The uh, we should. We mentioned the question of the Holy Grail. I want to go through that again. Hmm. The Holy Relic. Uh, Sir Galahad, the purest of knights, the one that eventually uh, succeeded in finding the Grail. I believe, from, from what I sort of find, is when he gets the Grail back, though, it's too late. Yeah. Um, and that's why we don't have Arthur ruling Britain today. <laughs> Hercules is in the chat. Hercules. Thank you, also, don't pay attention to my misspelling there. Don't worry about it. Uh, what was that? Um, I want to say there's. Is there an anime or a cartoon painting from the? Uh, you know what I mean when I say anime. The uh, Sir uh, Sir Galahad. Anime about Sir Galahad? Yeah. Something about I don't know why it just hit me now. I mean Galahad is in Fate Grand Order. I'm sure. That's all that's you know, coming it, up here. That that that's that's fair. The uh that's one thing about a lot of these myths we've looked into when you find there's a couple of them that really have the story has been told again and again some way. Yeah. You know. He's also apparently in the hentai game Neko Neko Machine Rage. Oh, sorry, Cannonball Neko Neko Machine Rage Race. He's a character there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not seeing the other anime about Sir Galahad. Okay, well we're gonna stop with that one. He's also in Sonic and the Black Knight. Okay, that's cool. You know, very nice. There's some great Galahad uh, Arthur fan fiction on here. <laughs> Is it? There's ah, a lot that there, there's a lot that uh, my, what you're referencing. uh that uh, Lord of the Rings pulls from Arthurian and uh Norse tales. I think I might have found what you're West. referencing. Yeah? Yeah. It's an older show. It might have been about all the knights. It might have been Arthur, but for some reason I'm thinking it was about Galahad and his trials go you know, to Does this look familiar to you? This image. A little bit, yeah. Because that is King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Okay. 
There's also Million Arthur Spins, The Legend in New and Interesting Ways, uh, Divine Gate, uh, Nobunaga the Fool apparently has Arthur in there. Which is okay. interesting. Sword Art Online has a guild called the Royal Knights with members using names from Arthurian legend. Legend of Legendary Heroes has a duo that goes on quests. That's not anything to do with Ultra, though. I've seen that series. That has nothing to do with Arthur. Why is that on this list? In a roundabout way. High School DxD took names and references from Arthurian legend. Sure, that's true. Yeah. Claymore's Knights have names from Arthur. Yeah. yeah. Lance and Masks has knights in it that have a relationship with each other, and their names are Guinevere and Lancelot. Kogias, of course, has nightmare frames. That's not anything to do with this. Never mind. This list is dumb. This list had like two that made sense and then yeah. went, hey, what else do we need? Any more? Well, there, there's not. It's like these main stories uh, from this. Uh, Tell Sir Green Knight. Great. We talked about Earth. Probably one of the biggest ones. Tolkien actually, that was actually, written, I think it's written in Middle English. Yeah. But Tolkien translated it. So, if you look for the book, you might find his translation. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah, the, the tragic love triangle. Arthur Guinevere, Lancelot. So I'm sorry, Paul, but I know it's kind of all over the place this week. It's understandable. Yeah, Fade's about King Arthur for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's because King Arthur is uh, named Saber, and she's a very cute anime girl. And so, of course, it's about her. And Kukulin is in episode one, but he's not the focus. Anyway, I'm not going to go on that rant right now. Yeah, see, there's... Okay, so, yeah, because the... Uh, yeah, Sir Boris went on... Uh, was on the, the mission. Quest for the Grail. For the Grail, yeah. Y'all I had Percival and Boris for the three good ones. Yeah. Makes Actually, sense. Yeah. Look, I'm a terrible person. I did not go back and, and fix this right. Actually, actually, I've been running around on a game, okay? He's been playing a lot of fake Grand Order, okay? Oh, no, no, I have this. <laughs> that, was his, that was his whole work for this week. Uh, he can talk about sex with Taylor Christian and a solo, which he's in love with, with his stepmom, in a way. Yeah. She got the hots for him as well. I think no, I don't think it's in a way. I think it's stepmom. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the original stepmom. What are you doing? Yeah, next is Life of Brian for sure. Yeah, right. Monty Python lore. Yeah, always look no. on the bright it's side. It's not Messiah. Blast female. That song is legitimately really good though. Always look on the bright side of life. Yeah, it's catchy, catchy, catchy. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. So Lancelot, We're the Lady of Shalot, she runs Lancelot. She's on the curse. Lancelot breaks the curse. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Sir. So it's free, but it, it puts. It's all. I think that's what put the curse on Lancelot. He was cursed into falling in love with Guinevere. Right. He wasn't. Also, quick aside. I don't mean to just keep referencing Holy Grail, but that is the event that's supposed to be referenced when Lancelot. Kills everybody in that nunnery. <laughs> it's supposed to be that story. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great scene. <laughs> Look, I just love that. Well, one of the whole things we've been talking about with mythology, right? Is what it's inspired. Yeah, yeah. And Arthurian mythology has, in a lot of ways, inspired way more than a lot of the other mythologies have because of how centralized the whole hero's journey is built on the story of arthur right yeah and so like growing up for just about all of us you've at least heard some of the stories yeah i think it's the like i said you know we're uh, born in england these are the first you know these are the first stories mm -hmm. uh, i know and i i think about yeah that's right you know has a whole arc about it okay there you go there you go the, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we keep going. Oh yeah, the movies and and, and the thing, probably comic books. He man is based on the the sword and the stone. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, see it. Like through there. And we get handed, you know, get handed great stories. And a lot of stories, like we looked at, that are, I don't know. There's in each each one, 
this movie more like a story like two lovers. Yeah. You know, unrequited love. It's right. like that. It's like you don't need to be for that reason to understand that story. Right. You understand that it, you know, that his heart's hurting, her heart's hurting, and they can never be together. Well, I don't blame you. I like fate too. I just can't play fate <laughs> grand order because I can't play a gotcha. It will literally destroy me. Yes. The uh <coughs> In fact, I should uh the little more I was worried about the mythology side, I should look, look back more on the historical side, but I believe that you can actually kind of not pinpoint exactly, but like, okay, Arthur, they got an author's base office, it's Warlord. Yeah. And this part uh, of Britain was kind of more tribal, you know, smaller kingdoms around. Right. Uh, I just really like this, this mythology, and I think it's really cool how much of a presence it's had, and the staying power it's had in the collective consciousness of mankind. Yeah. It's the other notes on that. Yeah, Sir Boars. I had him down at the end here. Yeah. Uh, it's unwavering faith and piety. Uh, it says that he's one of the few knights to achieve the Holy Grail and displays a uh, strong moral character. Well, because more than one person finds it, right? But it's only one person can bring it back. That, yeah. The, uh, well, yeah. I told you I had a couple of these twice. <laughs> No, I, I like the knights a lot. I think I'm really tired of, and we talked about what it has inspired, right? The love triangle. <laughs> really tired of it. Yeah. And it, the first version that I heard of it was here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it could be. It very well could be. The Bible is, is pretty propagated as well in the collective consciousness of mankind. It's got to be. It's got to be one of the biggest stories out there. Mm-hmm. I, as far you know, as far as propagating stories, the like the printing press of the Bible is you can't touch it. Yeah, that was that was pretty big. You know, it's a big big deal. And you've had like in like in recent times, you can see because before Tolkien, that was that's not fantasy. Right. Fantasy was different. It wasn't. It wasn't about. No, I put Merlin in there. We talked about Merlin earlier, but yeah. Merlin is also in everything. Yes. I it, think it'd be really interesting to do, like, Google data searches. I would need a lot of time to collate it all. Yeah. But of, like, how much does Jesus come up? How much does Arthur come up? How much does Merlin come up in other fiction? Like, in other stuff? Yeah. Because Jesus is tough to find, like, you're going to find a lot of stuff in there. It yeah. would be tough to parse that in, like, anime-only appearances, right? Where, I guess, also for Arthur and for Merlin, because the TV shows. But, Jesus can come up a lot more. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. think so. I don't know. But that that's, as far as, like, a story that's that's touched everything, you know, y'all, y'all are probably onto something with the amount that, mm-hmm. you know, Arthur... Merlin's in everything. But obviously not actually everything. I'm being hyperbolic, well, but he's in a lot. We talk about there's something funny about the, the the all-powerful bearded guy that shows up yeah. with answers. Uh that we run across. Because uh because Codal. Yeah. It's that. It, it, it's come up before there's you know, this old man, he's full of wisdom. Yep. You know, or somehow. Somehow. It's always <sighs> around there. Thundercats too, where the Sword of Omens is obviously based on, you know, mm. King of uh, Hearts. Yeah, true. Yeah, uh, Thundercats is based off. And Jaga is Merlin, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. old man who shows up over and over again. Yeah, that's very. Uh, that is Ethereum base. Yeah. yeah. Quite literally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, King of Hearts. That's just Merlin. Right. They call him like Fusoya or something, but it's just Merlin. But you got to count all the spellings too, because like Merlin, you have like the spell M E R L I N. Yeah, I've seen it spelled with a Y, a Y N, and I've seen it spelled like M, something like M Y R L E A N, Merlin, hmm. or you know. Also, just to real quick go back and catch my basis, I was not trying to insinuate that Jesus was fictional. I just want to <laughs> clarify that much. 
before somebody's like, wow, Trey, <laughs> it's not what I'm trying no. to insinuate. No. But, uh, as far as, I don't know, as far as stories go, uh, let's say the, the English speaking world, so to speak, or the West, the West world, it's off. Oh, it's going to be huge. Yeah. I know Lord of the Rings is too, but then, you know, that, I see the six shoulders, it stands off. Look, your swords are coming out of your toilet. We have a problem. Yeah. I stood by that lake forever. All I'm saying. <laughs> what it showed up. Also, man, the Kelpies must have been eating good from people that came down to the to the side of the lake waiting for a sword. That's another thing. The, there's versions of this where it's like the supernatural is constantly happening. Hmm. Uh, uh, and then there's others that are more like dry of magic. Yeah. Like, like, they're not really historical, but they try it. I guess they right. come across as more of that. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's really interesting to see all the different ways that the Arthurian mythology is treated. Of, you know, the, the everything's magical. The knights themselves are magical, and their bravery makes them magic. Yeah. Versus the, you know, yeah, no, it's just a sword. It's just a really good sword. Right. You know. Order 1911, PS4 title. Just the Knights of the Round. Okay. Yeah, oh, the Order 1886. Is that the one you're thinking of? Where they called each other Sir Bedivere and Sir Tristan and all that? Yeah. Yeah. It should have been called the Order 1911. Okay. <laughs> Colts. No, oh, that's... That's very true. And then there's also... Um, and the, Seven Deadly Sins got some... Yeah, other, Seven Deadly Sins has a bunch of it in there. Other stuff in it. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. There's a scene in Gintama where Gintoki pulls a wooden sword out of a stone. Yeah, they were drinking from the Philosopher's Stone to, to extend their life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, okay. there's references to it in Full Metal Alchemist. Heck, even in Zelda, he pulls a sword from a stone or a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's everywhere. Kingdom and their concept that they're K-pop group. Reborn Kings, one of them is Arthur. I have to know who are the others. I kind of curious, too. Please tell me one of them is Kukulin. I don't know. It's probably not, but please. Is Arthur Makul. He, he was a king. He's a king in my heart. Okay. 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 I, I appreciate it. For some reason, I'm kind of invested in this. Like, yeah, I am too, honestly. Like, and so something in my heart is like, and I want that to be true. Yeah. To actually be a thing. That yeah. Are. Let that actually be Arthur now singing yeah. K-pop. Yeah. Ivan? Well, maybe not. I might take my Ivan the Terrible. Ah, uh, that could be. That could be Ivar though. Lothbrook. Okay. But Ivan is the, the way they've translated it. One is Lewis. If their manager is not called Merlin, I'm going to be really... Yeah, Louis the 16th. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The 5th. Oh, okay. The fifth. okay. okay. Yeah, the fifth. there you go. No, I just... I really like when you look down at, at how much it is spread, what it's what it's taken over, you know? Um, I don't know. Hey. Soul Eater has that sword Excalibur. No? Mujin? Yeah. Mujin. I feel like I should know that. Not Mujin Core. <laughs> Some are Emperor. Fair enough. All right? None. There's none in Pokemon, I'm sure. No, uh, Aegis Slash is a magical sword that is steel typing. Yeah. But he's a ghost because his owner was supposed to come back and never did. Yeah. So he's based on Excalibur, clearly. Okay. Okay, so some of them are only based on, like, they've changed the names. Okay. Because when I looked up Mujin, it came up with Jimu, Emperor Jimu. Okay. 
So, so I'm trying to pull that up here. Uh, there is Chiwu is based on Chio. Okay. Who was the uh, leader of the nine Li tribes in Chinese history. Uh, the Korean version of his name is Chiwu, which is why they went for Chiwu. Okay. Uh, he was the first Yan emperor, which would have been the one that they tried to bring back with the Yellow Turban Rebellion. That they tried to bring back the Yan dynasty. Oh, okay. So, okay. Very important guy. Uh, Pokedex might as well be Merlin or maybe Professor Oak. Yeah. Oh, he got replaced by the. Okay. Well, this must be an old article. Uh, by another Chinese emperor that's players. Jahan is based off of uh, Nuruddin Muhammad Salim. Okay. Which was the Mughal emperor. Mughal? It says Mughal, but could be Mughal. Okay. Uh, Mongol, sorry. Mujin, of course, is Jimu, as we said, which was the <laughs> Japanese emperor that claimed to be descended from the sun goddess and the storm god. Mm-hmm. Then no, I was wrong. Yvonne is not based on Ivor. It's based on Ivan the Terrible. Yeah. Uh, I take your eyes out with spoons. Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible. Don, as she pointed out earlier, with the two ends, is based on Dan of Denmark. Louis is based on the sixteenth. Okay. Oh no, I'm sorry. He's based on the fourteenth. Louis fourteen. Okay. And then of course King Arthur. Yes. As you would expect. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Also, that article was written by somebody named Brain. You got to do it. Just want to give a quick shout out to that person. That's kind of cool. About that. Some historic K-pop there. I got... Yeah. I mean, Arthur's got he's got wide reach. I guess. Yeah. I guess so. He got a good publicist, right? Yeah. Good publicist. No Everybody knows him. Knows how to work the crowd. Really gets them pumped up. Everybody's waiting for his reunion tour. Yeah. It's, it's, he comes back. Right. Yeah, good. So your homework, chat, is to go watch The Holy Grail and also go watch Gargoyles so you can get all that context with Arthur. So we, we skirted around it. Should we actually talk about the love triangle and what happens there and the war? Because we've touched on little bits of it. Oh, and, uh, Arthur and Guinevere, that's a lot. Because mm-hmm. Arthur and Guinevere are married for a while. Yeah. Yeah, some stories it seems that uh, it's like love at first sight, mm-hmm. right? Between her and Lancelot. Like I said, it's not seeing where it was, Lancelot was cursed to do it, and there was a, uh, he actually, in some tales, like, he sees Guinevere you know, I go, dang! And it's like, no, I'm out. And actually leaves for yeah. a long time. And him being the strongest knight. That's a problem. Yeah. And not being there. Some people try to take advantage of it. Um, it's not always clear where the enemies come from. Right. You know, it depends on, see, it depends on who's telling the tale. Like, who's well, yeah, but he used this guy as a, you know, this guy was a spy for him. Yeah. He was sympathetic. Or, or who, or he, who, who was, you know, who was the actual villains to take down, the rival, rival kingdom. I think my favorite version of the story is that Guinevere and Arthur were in love. Yeah. Uh, fell in love when he first saw her, right? And then Lancelot, as you saw, or as you said, Caesar goes, nah, I can't do this to him. And yeah. leaves. Comes back with the curse. Everything happens there. There's the cure cry. Thank you. Uh, Arthur locks her away. And exiles Lancelot. He can't bring himself to hurt either one. And then Lancelot, now unable to live without her, goes and raises an army from Guinevere's people that yeah. are angry she's been locked up uh, and don't realize that Morgan Le Fay is, 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 is doing is it off in the, the background. Whole thing yeah. To weaken and divide Arthur. So yeah. her son. Could be the true mm-hmm. King of England. They exclude the love triangle and the new Merlin. That's good. They should. Yeah. <laughs> no, they probably shouldn't. But also, I'm glad they did. Well, it's it's 
in the you know in the region tell that's a that's a huge breaking moment the kingdom yeah. shatters at this point yeah at this betrayal Arthur starts feeling all sorry for himself but that was a weak weaker king yeah it's a lot of it. I just think what my favorite telling of it is yeah because I love there's an old 80s movie called Excalibur it's, yeah they, they do it. it's a great movie great version of it I do have more to Arthur here yeah but I'm not sure when the last time I was I actually read that right Not so much about the, the Disney one. No. I mean, it's all right. It's yeah. funny, but... Yeah. There's a whole weird subplot where he falls in love with a squirrel. Yes, there is. Yeah. I just really like the tragedy of... The sweet, sweet tragedy of... Lancelot didn't want to do it. Guinevere didn't want to do it. Arthur didn't want to do it. Yeah. And they were forced to do it by Morgan and all that she's done. And so now they're all upset. None of them are happy. Merlin slept with Guinevere. Oh boy. <laughs> Night Riders, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Good pull. Night Good Riders. Pull. Also, Kamen Rider Knight. Yeah. Is based on Arthurian style knights. He's got like the the sword and the shield and the, the visor and the, the sword has like a magical sword variant of it. And then Kamen Rider Brave later on. Yeah. It's based on Final Fantasy, but his final turn that he gets to do. <laughs> I just forgot to, yeah. Power Rangers Mystic, yeah. Yeah, Merlin's brought up there. Um, Kamen Rider Brave in his final uh, Tattle King form is Excalibur is the name of his swords. Ah, uh, okay. No, I'm there. Or Tattle Legacy, I'm sorry. Well, obviously, it's a very, very important story that people relate to. Yeah. Uh, I think Merlin comes up in Magi Ranger, the show that Mystic is based on as well. And I think he becomes Magi Shine. Is that that thing that like polishes stuff? Yeah, yeah. No, sham, yeah. That was a sham wow. Yeah. Sorry. It's not a polish. Look, chat, if you will give me like an FGO, but for Cover Rider and Sentai, I'm there. I'll lose all my money. I noticed that, there, you know, we'll, we'll keep freaking up Fate, uh, Grand mm -hmm. Order, and Smite had a lot of them in there. That's, we don't talk about that sword. We don't talk about that sword. Smite uh, does have a bunch of them in there. Um, no, Fate Fate does it pretty well, I think. Yeah. Uh, in Fate, Arthur is turned into a girl. And okay. the version of the story is that she always was a girl. She had to pretend to be a man because she was the one that pulled the sword from the stone. Oh. And she had to be king. And so everybody just pretended she was a man. And uh, Saber, as she's called there, because that's the class that she's in. Because all of them lose their names and become the class. Like, Kukulin is a lancer. He's not Kukulin anymore. He is, but he can't call right. himself that. Uh, but she's lost her sword and just has the sheath and... <laughs> Or she's got the sword, but she doesn't have... It depends on the version. Sometimes she doesn't have the sheath. Anyway, um, she teams up with the main character and tries to, to help him win the uh, the Grail War, but he doesn't want her to fight because she's a girl and he doesn't think she needs to be fighting, and she's way stronger than him because she's King Arthur. Yeah. So it, it leads to some complications. Okay. Look, she pulled the sword out. Whatever. It's not Joan of Arc, people. It's Joan of Arc is also in fact. Yeah. Sure. Fine. Yeah, some romantic complications come in, and then he really doesn't want her to fight anymore. Oh, yeah. Because he falls for her. Yeah. But, you know. Look, you're hot. Please don't get hurt. <laughs> Joan of Arc? No. No. That's not mythology. No, that's historical. I got, to, I got to think it got it got me thinking about like uh, I don't know how they like think that for me when I was little of uh, uh, some American mythology yeah and like the uh, what was it? what was it? Paul Bunyan yeah and Blue you know 
the uh so they're the size of Godzilla. They're a Yeah. <laughs> they're huge. They're huge. What's it called? Johnny John Actacy kind of has some yeah. mythology about it. Pegasus Bill. Mm-hmm. And another so a, a twister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. The uh Excalibur. Right. Look, Excalibur's and everything. Yeah. But the I I think there's I think there's a western that's been done with it where Excalibur's a gun. Yeah, I think so. Kaiju, yeah. Yeah, I think so Kaiju. for sure. For sure. Forget Godzilla vs. Kong. Where's Godzilla vs. Paul Bunyan? Oh, well, he'll bring an axe. Yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Depends on it. I think Godzilla can get that shock charge off or not. Yeah. Let's right, see. <laughs> yes. The, uh, what? It would be remiss of me to not bring up the sword inspired by Excalibur that has been in every Dark Souls and every Demon Souls, which is just one, and it's in Bloodborne. It's the Moonlight Great Sword. It's based on Excalibur. It is a magical sword that sometimes you get it in Kingsfield games. At one point, you pull it out of a lake. With Demon Souls, you pull it out of a bog. Okay. You know, uh, it, is, it has always been a magical sword. It's also in the, I was about to bring that up, it's also in the Armor Core games. Though most of the time in the Armor Core games, you just get it for beating a level or a tough boss. Right. It's not like you find it somewhere. Um, but. I think that Bloodborne has the best execution of it, where you fight a man that used to be a knight and had yeah Caliburn too, and uh, he has he has lost himself. He's gone crazy, and when you get him to half hell, Sir Lorit remembers that he was a knight because the gleam of the moonlight greatsword reminds him who he used to be, and then instead of fighting you. As a berserk monster, he fights you upright as a knight again. Okay. And it's it's really cool. Yeah, and in Dark Souls 1, you get it by impunity solid legendary hero. And who might that legendary hero be? It's not Arthur. I'm okay. trying to remember who Let me pull it up what the name is for sure. Yeah, it's what I, thought it might, yeah. Yeah, I thought it might not be mentioned it, which is why I like a legendary hero. Dark Souls. I don't remember the name. Artorius? It's not Artorius, no. Okay. You can get it by cutting off C's tail. You don't get it by beating Artorius. That's not how you get it. <coughs> Are you sure? Yeah, Moonlight Moonlight Great Sword is from C's tail, that's right. Well, right now, I feel like I fell short this week again. I want to make sure to get some of the knights. Well, the knights are cool. I'm trying to see where you get them in the other games, too, just in case I've forgotten. Only y'all are making me realize just how, you know, ingrained these, these stories are. You never heard the original one. Yeah, we don't get it from our toys. I'm sorry. We like butterfly soul works. Yeah. Can do some stuff with that. No, there's there's a lot of it in everything, right? Arthur is a and the Arthur story, Lancelot's and a bunch of stuff. Even yeah. Sir Laurent that I just referenced was based on Lancelot, right? Right. There was a when Golden Axe it was a Golden Axe type game that had the knights. It'd be Lancelot, and he had a rapier, blue, silver armor. Was it Knights of the Realm? That might be it. That that sounds really familiar to me. And Percival was like big and strong. He wore green. Yeah. He, yeah. So in Dark Souls 2, you just get it for beating a boss and then turning the boss soul in. And the boss is the Duke's Dear Freya, the spider boss. Doesn't really have anything to do with my... Uh, Dark Souls 3, you get it for beating Osiris, the Consumed King. Which is like Seath, so that makes sense. I already told you. It's Ludwig is the name of the Ludwig's Holy Blade. 
Uh, it's not Lorient. I'm sorry. It's Ludwig is the name of that boss. Okay. And then in Elden Ring, you get it for doing a quest line. So. Okay. Can you send stuff on Discord? All right. I have to look at it. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Bless you. Yeah. You've been also a lot of really bad attempts at doing King Arthur Big. Yeah. I think it's through some of those. I think it's better off, much more better to just kind of pay homage to it than to actually try to do the story thing sometimes. Yeah. Fortigern? Fortigern. That must be another one of the knights. There's quite a few of them. Because we didn't mention uh, Gilbert the White Hand. Gareth or Gaharis, the brothers. The brothers that fight a dragon, by the way. That's cool. Yeah. But, like, eventually, how many knights? you got to pull up. You can do justice to all of right. them, you know? Right. I don't know. That might be the reference there. You got me curious now. Vortigern. It's auto filling for you. Table shows 25. See, this one did. This is 25. There's Sir Hector and Sir Brunor. And Sir Tristan, Sir DeGoyne. Sir Boar, Sir Galahad, Sir Kay. Sir DeGore, yeah. Sir Benedire, DeGore, Percival, and Sir Lancelot. But I also believe, and this is just my opinion, that there are a lot of times where people made new knights to add to it. Yeah. Or they had heard a legend yeah. about a different knight and just added it in there. See, so in the, the most popular version, there are 12. Yeah. Uh, the Winchester Rides had a table show that was 25. Depends on the story. In one of the movies we watched, he was the king who had the castle that kept falling. Vortigern. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in the one with the 12 knights, that's... I think it's the one that keep my brain keeps going through. Yeah. Like, this one was the most pure. This one had, you know, yeah. most faith. This one was, uh, you know, the best at fighting or whatever. Each one of them had something. Uh, God, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So. There are, I said there were different legends, right? Yep. Yeah. So the figure may range from a dozen, twelve, or I said to as many as <coughs> one thousand six hundred. Yep. Let's hope that helps. DBZ with the Z sword being stuck in the yeah, with being stuck in the stone. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, also, we didn't mention it earlier, but I've been waiting for the right time to bring it up. Quest for Camelot, one of my favorite movies ever made. Uh, animated movie, it's great. Uh, it is based on the story after. Lancelot has left. Yeah. But, and Guinevere is gone, but the kingdom hasn't fallen apart yet. Mordred hasn't attacked yet. Yeah. And it's it's got uh, two new characters that become knights by the end of the movie. Spoilers, I guess, but the movie's super old. You should watch it, though. It's really good. Um, Sir Garrett and Sir Kaylee. Uh, but it brings in a new bad guy that was a knight, and he's not any, like, he's, he's, Roth, what is his name? He's a Rothschild. I was going to say Roth, Roth. Art, but, uh, quest for Camelot. Rupert, Sir Rupert. He's made specifically for it. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't realize it was based on a book. I need to read that. The King's Damsel. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Or dig deeper it gets. You can find yeah. it. But it's uh it's it's a really good movie. And it has uh Excalibur as like this unbreakable magical sword that yeah. is better than all others. Yeah. And even a wounded Arthur is still able to beat just about anybody with it. You know? Right, yeah. The sword is very tough. Mm -hmm. Unbreakable. Never needs sharpened. It's just the greatest weapon ever. Yeah. Always ready. Is that where we get the idea in so much fiction that magic swords can't break? 
uh, if Final uh, possibly Final Fantasy, I think in the original Final Fantasy, the Muramasa was a, just a little bit better. Singularity kept a lot. Yeah. The uh, then Excalibur. Right. A little bit faster, faster, but I wouldn't want to face anybody holding either one. Yeah. Or the Musmune. Yeah. I think it really comes down to which game as to which one's better. Because in one and seven, Excalibur's. No. I think in one and seven, the Muramasa's is better. Yeah. But in six and four, I think Excalibur's better. Okay. And then in nine, the Musmune is better. Huh. So we're gonna let more goes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's uh there's a there's a trend there with like this idea of three sisters or uh three maidens, three three women. Uh, a lot of times that has to do with some kind of power, secret power, uh fortune telling, things like that. Well, you, it's funny know. you say that because the sword's name is Braver, which is what it was called that because one of the first manga that was ever made that tells the story of King Arthur is called Braver. Oh, okay. Caps. And so the the sword is called Braver for that. And that's where the Buster Sword is a combination of the Buster Sword, Braver, and then another sword. And then eventually it became eight swords. And that's where you get Octoslash. Gotcha. It's because it's all eight blades built into one. Well, then. So. I did not know that. And it's that also why Cloud's first limit break is called Braver. Because that's where yeah. the first limit break gives you the Buster Sword and Braver. Gotcha. It's eventually build up to having all eight. Mm-hmm. You get to see that in high definition detail in Advent Children. It's one of the only good things about that movie. Is that the Buster Sword opens up and all eight blades are in the air and Cloud's jumping between grabbing each one. Yeah, Durandal. It, I think you're right. I think Durandal is the other one in there. Okay. When it's just the three. We're going to have bring a list together of magic weapons. Oh, I love talking about magic weapons. There's so many cool ones. What? You've seen Advent Children? There you go. Oh, no. Also, 16 minutes ago, I missed it. We got to hydrate. Should be paying attention to that. I'm sorry. I need to make it like audio sting for it. There's a. Uh... Oh, Durandal's not. It's uh, Durandal is Roland's sword, who is the aide de Chal to Aja Shaw yeah. to uh, Emperor Charlemagne. Yeah. We use the sword Joyes. I there love you go. Roland. Roland is such a cool guy. Yeah. He's short. He holds that pass from the Saracens so that Emperor Charlemagne can get away. Yeah. He's so cool. Yeah. I'm going to pull it up. What are the eight swords in? Charles Roland sword? to the Dark Tower K. That, it is. And that was. It's. Authors are part of that, but when you get into that and, and to Britain and you look at the Gaelic, the Celtic lore, and a, lot, a lot of different uh, places, you have uh, you have a great hunt. You see a lot of a lot of different beasts uh, are representing things in the countryside, and like Britain lore would be a small part of that. Trying to find it, Chad. What is it? Try and pull up what the eight swords that are in it are. What are the eight swords? Now, I see sometimes in some stuff, they're like, ah, they'll put the Sword of Damocles up there. But that's not a mystic sword. Yeah. That's just a regular sword. It's belonged to Damocles. Or got hung over his head. Right. So it is the fusion sword, which is combined with the Buster Sword, Braver, and Durandal. Okay. And that makes up eight somehow, because the fusion sword is made up of five. Arandite. What? 
No, it just says it's made up. It says it's made up of six blades, so I guess Durandal's not included in there. Because it's it's six blades in there, and then it adds in the Buster Sword and the Braver. And that makes the eight. Also, it's a fusion sword of six blades, but you can get Omni Slash version five, which is five slashes out of it. That's makes sense. I, I don't understand. Yeah, Arondite is also a, a legendary weapon. Nice. Go on a quest for the greatest weapons in the world. Oh, there's so many good legendary swords. Uh, Kusanagi. Yeah. The grass cutter sword. That's a great one. I'm trying to remember what the, the green some. dragon saber, which is Guandu. Yeah, Guan Yu. Yes. So yeah, well, I know there's legendary weapons could obviously got some in Norse. you got thor's hammer but mm-hmm. you've also got like it in the in the the ring quest stories you've got swords that are named yeah uh, the totally. blade that kills fafnir and then becomes called fafnir yeah i, think, I don't think gilgamesh is he have an axe for that bail the creatures in there i don't know there's not a lot and it started started to go out. I was trying to stay. <coughs> uh the characters. From what I could tell from the little bit of research that I did for this week, uh there weren't a lot of specific creatures, but depending on where you see the story from, it borrows some from other places. As we know dragons, the uh uh, there's a, a name steed, Lugor. Lumbre. Uh, yeah, Passel. Uh, Passland, the horse of Arthur. Uh, that's in one story told by Baru. Baru? Yeah. Baru. Baru. <laughs> On that. I'm just deciding that's how you pronounce it. A lot of, a lot of like the, the magical is is either or supernatural is either in a it's like in a person like a sorcerer or merlin or the place yeah like avalon the magic inhabits the land through there so there wasn't a lot of sounds good book uh wasn't, wasn't a lot of creatures yeah there's a couple dragons but i don't think they even get names no and they're never shown as very big Either. No, it's they fight dinosaurs realistically. That's what it was. Yes. Although in some versions of the story, Sir Harris can become a dragon after he kills the dragon, and that feels very Volsungy, you know? Yeah. Like he bathed in the dragon's blood and then can become a dragon, because that's what makes Sigurd of the Volsungs become immortal. Well, see, a lot of this is weird because you have. Because when we, it's like when we're going, like I was talking about how fantasy was not the same mm-hmm. after. You know, fantasy, we think of fantasy as from Tolkien. Yeah. That that kind of world, that kind of built up. But a lot of, like, when people think medieval, they think Arthur. Yeah. And that doesn't, didn't quite line up. Right. So there's a lot, like, I, got a, I do have a bestiary, a medieval bestiary, and they had, uh, uh, a unicorn in there and they had a phoenix in there and a griffin yeah but they also had things like elephant fox frog heart deer uh wolf. You know, lion wolf pig pelicans stags you gotta be careful with those pelicans around i have a quest for you my loyal knight go out and kill that beast pelican no no I'm trying to think of them to do Arthurian Bichere. See, everything go Arthurian Bichere goes to like a medieval. Well, there's a lot of like some of the stories that use the Fae, some of the stories that use uh, Scottish. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and that's really what you're going to see more often than not in monsters that have to do with King Arthur. It's going to be a lot of the stuff we've already covered. <coughs> I think so. Yeah, for sure. Camelot and it's it's helped to form kingdoms. Right. 
of that. Yeah, the idea of a thank you. The idea of a uh, a king steps up and then the rest of the kingdom slowly stabilize around him. You know, I'd said a lot of fiction. Yeah, well, like the the idea of you know, like an early kingdom. And mm-hmm. we we're talking. Uh, we did uh, Korean mythology. Yeah, a lot of that went to the time of the three kingdoms. You know, yeah, this is in the first kingdom. Um, I think Chinese goes back to that too. The, the idea, idea of the lost prince. Yeah, that is that is in so much fiction today. That is in so much fiction today. The lost prince that you look at RPGs. <laughs> right. The lost no, prince that comes back to you raise are the, the chosen. Yeah, you have the birthmark. Hey, it works in spaceballs. Yeah, you have the you know you have the necklace. Yeah, with the symbol on it. Well, it's, it's, like I said earlier, it's the hero's journey, which we get from Arthur, right? Yeah. That's the thing that sets older writings apart, is there is a Lost Prince, that's right, in House of the Castle. Yeah. Uh, before Arthur, a lot of the writings we had were just historical, or just mythology. There, there was fiction, right? Well, you go but, back, and like... There's... One thing about Arthur strikes me it is the the love triangle because that's that does not make Arthur look good, right? At all, and you don't like in like in Beowulf, he always looks good. Yeah, you know he can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, same with Gilgamesh, right? Yeah, everything he does is technically right. Right, but and, it never look it never looks bad. Mm-hmm. It's the first time that we really get that I know of anyway. A story that is the journey with the downfall right. and then the raising back up to be a king, you know? Yeah. Well there's some there's something to be said <coughs> in the story we talk about like the ideals, yeah. these myths and stuff trying to pass on. Yeah. You know, the, the people around them, you know, what from stuff like why is the moon and sun on two different you know, right to come up to other things of why things are the way they are. And there's something in there, in the author story, because you're get to the Holy yeah. Grail, because it is it's not a time in the world where might right, right. Yeah, you could beat everybody else down. You were the ruler. Yeah, you were king. But t- towards the end of the tale, it's the humblest, purest of the knights that come back with the, that completes the, uh, the biggest quest. The yeah, Holy Grail. not the strongest of them all. No, I agree. And it's shown that might can't solve the problem when Mordred kills Arthur. Not because yeah. Mordred was stronger, but because Mordred used deceit. Yeah. And if Arthur had been this unstoppable king, it wouldn't have mattered how much deceit was raised against him. Right. No, it's it's a really interesting story, and it, it has taken over the world in a lot of ways without even meaning to. Yeah, y'all went through a lot. You and Chad went through quite a bit that, you know, it's been, it's been recognized in or paid homage to in some way. Mm. Do that. So, I don't know if I have much. I was trying to think if there's any others in like big media. I was thinking like One Piece. What is there in One Piece that's and I can't I can't think of anything. I think there's I think that, like I think TV shows where there's like a, especially like fantasy ones where there's like an art you know yeah that some touches on. I think they even did it in in Xena. I think oh I'm sure was, there was a little art through there that ran through, uh, you know, when King Arthur. I'm sure. Yeah, it's 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 in the cultural consciousness, right? The collective consciousness of mankind. Yeah, well, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, and you know, of course, not for everybody, but for a lot of people. Yeah. The Jedi Order, pretty much. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that. <clears throat> and it's one of those things where, like now. I wouldn't blame anybody for taking inspiration from Arthur, right? Right. If they just did that again, as Keith just pointed out, with Star Wars, I'm not going to be upset that they did that. Right. Because to me, it is a seminal part of humanity now. That is just an idea that we have. And in the future, some of the ideas we have right now will be that again. You know? If we make it that long. If we make it that long. I think it's really cool. Because this was consolidated in the 13th century. Yeah. All these stories were. <clears throat> so I'm figuring it probably hasn't started 
sometime around because uh, England and the nation started in 1066, the Battle of Aces. Yeah. And when there's some out of the, the skirmishes and fights, you know, around yeah. that time. Somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking these stories might have come to come to life. Oh, I just could yes, it just hit me. The the specific names of the nightmare frames. The Lancelot, the Percival, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll see that. No, uh, I still think the Bible is probably more so. That, that could just be me being biased, but I still think that it's probably more so in the collective consciousness. Yeah. Just because it's been around longer. Well, there's stuff. It was easiest for, for, for us to point out, like the author stuff we see. I, yeah. I think some of the like stuff that the Bible, like skin on my teeth is from the Bible. Right. You know, Job. And that's something that everybody knows, but may not, may not know where from. You know, where it's An eye from. for an eye. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> Things like that. I don't know. That's a pretty big story. Yeah, I mean, it's got kind of, uh kind of yeah, kind of interesting how well known these characters are. <laughs> yeah, I guess in a way. Yeah, I think that one might be a reach, but I guess in a way, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that if we just expand it out to chosen one stories, yes, yeah, we yeah. Could do that. The uh, I think there is a guy in One Piece that uses a move called Excalibur, and I'm trying to remember what it is. It's not important right now. Point is, it's in a lot of stuff. It is. So where are we going next? And uh, we expand out a little bit more. This is a one vein, one story. Yeah. That. What do you think in chat? Where would you like us? To see us go next. Try to figure out what to... There's still a lot of options. Yeah. There's uh, See, uh, author also divides up. Kind of like some of those... What's what? Christian lore? I did that. It's going to be weird because I've just... My, okay, so we did Slavic. When I mean, you're looking yeah. at Slavic lore, and you have... There's kind of like a break between the pre-Christian and the Christian era. Yeah. Of how things... But there's a lot of they kept the same, and it, even with the Ethereum, you have kind of had there's like a pre, hmm. there's like a what is it like a pagan, as I guess yeah out there, and then you have you have more of a Christian one with the Holy Grail right and stuff coming in. It might make sure I had not this stuff. Yeah, so no, but I would almost I'd almost rather do like an area. Yeah, and see how it's, you know it, that's affected through area yeah arthur was kind of a special thing yeah because it, it has bled into so much but it also is its own mythology in a lot of ways whereas if we did like christian lore well that goes into a lot of other areas and mingles you know even if we looked at like hebrew mythology well, you, we're yeah, looking you at break it down to protestant right to orthodox exactly it gets it gets muddy real quick yeah Give it a shot, though. But I think a lot of places where if we do, Rome will be pretty good. Yeah, Rome will be really interesting. It'll be kind of good because we, we, ref, we can reflect that back to the Greek. Mm -hmm. Give something to talk about there and the, the changes it made. Yeah. Going from uh, what's it, Zeus to Jupiter. Yeah, to Jupiter. And uh, Hermes to Mercury. Ares to, to Rome Mars. or to Mars. Yeah. To the Aphrodite of Venus. Nobody's asked for it yet, King. That's why we haven't done it. Yeah. We get, we're going to, so, somebody else usually say something in the in in the, in chat. We'll go, yeah, all right, we're going to do that. Also, next. to clarify, that would be a lot less homework for you than trying to wrap up all of the different Christian nominations into one. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way to do that, I don't think. Yeah, I think but, you'd have to break them down, and then we'd be here for a long time just on Christian mythologies. Yeah. Well, also, but also, yeah, we definitely already said, because if we do now, if we get into Israeli, that's going to mix it up a little bit, but we're going to have like a golem. Yeah. There, there's some, there is stuff some good stuff there. in there. But. There's stuff to talk about there, but I think we'll go with Roman. And it's... it's it. But it was not a bad suggestion, but thank you for making it. Yeah. We'll go Roman and yeah, the, the Greek 2.0. Let's what that is. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify for anybody, it's like, well, you seemed really against that. I think you need to understand how much is wrapped up in that. 
it would be like if you asked us to cover African mythology. Yeah, there's no, no way. You no, have to, no. There's so Pick many different region. places in there. Pick a region. Because when you yeah. say Christian, do you mean... Ethiopian would be good, though. Ethiopian would, would be good. That would, come up, that would come up a lot in that. Do you mean right. American Christian? Do right. you mean original Christianity? Do you mean Catholic Christian? Yeah. Do you, like, you go down the list, man. It'd be a lot. It'd be a lot. But yeah, I, th- I think, well, that's one thing we're going to touch on. Yeah. You know, but like if we do some of the Middle East countries, we're going to touch on uh, uh, some Muslim mythology. Can't yeah, it. for sure. And that gets deep, too. Yeah, because it's going to be ingrained in, in some of that. Yeah. Mm. There's also Mormon. Yeah, that's true. Apparently, there's crickets. <laughs> Mormon crickets that look like a traveling carpet of red blood. Yeah, we we read about those Tuesdays. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. No, I I'm excited for Roman. I do think it'd be really cool to cover both Hebrew and Ethiopian at some point. Yeah. So Church of Scientology. That's different. Yeah. That's a different one. I don't know. We're I'm not afraid. covering just religions, or we'd have to talk about Zenu. People stand out in front of my house, just staring at me after we do that one. Yeah, Zenu's is on thing, and they don't have midichlorians, but there's something like midichlorians there. Yeah. That that would be a fun one off though, Star Wars. Star Wars mythology, because that runs deep. Yeah, it does. Start a who shot first argument. Shh. Let's greet him. No, no. No, Han shot first. Yeah. And he was right to. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, nobody wants him anymore, so of course you're giving him out for fun. Oh. Uh, okay, so we're doing Roman next week. Yeah. I'll come in dressed like Kratos. I will not do that. That's not happening. Please, please no. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I need to I need, I'm, I'm make sure I compare uh, like the uh, back to the Greeks. I think they just they not, stole it wholesale not and not then changed but, the name. But it pretty much lines up, matches it. Doesn't yeah. It? Yeah. Unshot five multiverses first. <laughs> yeah. No, Rome went, hey, we like your stuff. We're going to take it. Yeah. It's ours now. Also, so, you can't call him Zeus anymore. His name's Jupiter. So who is Janus? Two headed guy sees both ways. Yeah. Anyway, he's named after. Yeah. I don't remember. I also know that Rome got rid of a bunch of the demigods. Yeah. And so, like, the one that's based on malice and hate is gone. And I liked her because <laughs> she had two blades for hands. Because why would malice and hate need anything but swords? swords. Yeah, right. It's like, you know what? That's the most clever thing I've ever seen in Greek mythology. That's super cool. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Rope and lure go burr. We don't need your other stuff. We took it, made it our own. Quite literally. I love the idea of the going, yeah, you can't call him Hermes anymore. His name's Mercurius and he's right there. Yeah. I don't know what you've been praying to all this time, but he's right there. <laughs> there, there, there. What? Let me tell you something. Airy pushover. Y'all need to hear about Mars. Yeah. Yeah, he's the he's the real god. And he's the new fashionable god of war. Yeah. Blue, it's the new red. Record of Ragnarok. Do they cover that in there? Man, just Rome. I just, I really love the idea of them going. Yeah, those are ours now. We changed their names, and also, uh, you can't call them that. Janice is still Janice and Rome. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. They cover everything in there. Nice. Also, uh, since Will has gone to eat, just a quick reminder: uh, they're all in fate as well. <laughs> All the Romans. They're all there. Gods versus historical figures. Nice. Yeah, you know. At the end of the day, if Rome had found Arthur, they would have named him something else, too. So Probably. That was a little before Arthur's time. Yeah. Was it the Romans or the Greeks that had... Yeah, there you go. That had a statue that was erected that was supposed to be the Hebrew God, and they just didn't know his name. Was that the Greeks or the Romans? No, no it, the statue wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be the Hebrew God. Oh, okay. It was just in case 
they missed a guy. Ah, uh, I got you. And then Paul came along and was like, I know who this is. And yeah, y'all missed. Yeah. Yeah. He uses that for the. Sorry. Was that the Greeks or the Romans? Though? I think it was Greeks. Okay. Lu Bu versus Thor. I would pay to watch that fight. I would pay to watch that fight. Shanto. Shanto versus Thor. There's two different Thunder guys. That'd be cool. One's got a hammer and the other's got a bat. Yeah. I'd pay to watch that fight too. Yeah. Also, can I get a fight? Welcome back, Will. We were talking about fate. We weren't, but. Can I get a fight between Anansi and Loki and the Jackal? No, they would just figure out how to work together. And that therefore, they would work together to just about get out of everything. Yeah. And that because they stabbed each other in the back, it would all fall apart. Those fights are there. All right, I guess I got to watch it. <laughs> I guess I got to watch it. So, Will, we've decided we're covering Rome next week. He was listening. in. Hey, we listen. I can't get anything patched. Can't get away from those ears, buddy. Uh, no, I'm excited for Rome. I think Rome's going to be a good time. Yeah. Slow down, Will. Will is always listening. Come on, Trey. Come on, Trey. Oh. I love how that was in stereo. Yeah. Uh, oh. Tomorrow we'll be building. Come on, yeah, Trey. Yeah. There's another one. Uh, the wing, right? That wing zero. Okay. I got it right. Uh, no, you don't have to apologize. I thought it was funny. Uh, so yeah, we'll be we'll be on the wing zero. Then Monday we'll be back in some more Lotro. I hit level sixty, so I'm ready. Okay. He's gonna stop playing Zelda long enough to level. Yeah. Nothing. He might just buy a boost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then Tuesday we'll have the regular scheduled podcast. Wednesday you'll play something. You're right. Based on whatever's voted on. Right. And then next Thursday, we'll cover a bro. Yes. Because I don't really want to. Yeah. At this moment. Yeah. There's, there's, I know a lot of this part of me that does. There's part of me that really wants to, to, to do that, play down floor, hmm. do it. But the large part of me that says, right, right now, it's just not worth it. Yeah. Only 60 people out of a thousand. There's 8 billion people on the planet. That's pretty. That number ramps up. Yeah. You start going to that. Unless it's only a thousand people. It could be just a thousand. Yeah. Name engraved in stone. No, nice. thank you. Nice. My name is engraved in all that I want it to be engraved in. Right. Which is somewhere Watch on out, stone. Watch out, Somewhere. Probably in storage. Okay. That's good enough. Fair enough. Until next time, then. Disappointed! Done it. Disappointed indeed. Got Man, gotcha. That's I don't I don't want to try it with the servers the way they are, and I don't want to pay Blizzard any money. Right now, so, yeah, you know, it's them and Wizards. So those are the two companies I refuse to give money to. Yeah, and I don't think it's changing anything. No, but it makes me feel better about me. Yeah, <laughs> but give me a moral high ground to stand on. So yeah, right there. Take that. So, until next time, I've been Trey. I've been Roman. This has been the Full Spectrum TTRPG Podcast. Remember to always enjoy the full spectrum. The life. And Arthurian mythology.